I'm going to paint this little robin and the techniques I'll show will work for any kind of bird painting. You can download a PDF with the outlines that you can trace if that makes it a bit easier for you. And please leave a comment if you have any questions or feedback. So I trace my bird and I have a limited palette today. And I'll start off with cadmium red light for the forehead where the red robins have this beautiful patch of red feathers and as so often I will apply a dollop of paint and then come in with a clean brush to soften the edge. I continue in doing the same for the breast area which is really the focus of this painting. That's what makes this bird um, special and then I'm gonna use a bit of my uh, yellow to give the red a bit more warmth and also to have some color variation in there. Clean brush, take the water out and then soften the edges. At this point I don't want any hard edges just yet except for um, the side of the bird obviously but not the feathers on the on the bird itself. And while the paint is wet, let's drop in uh, a few darker versions of that red. So I've just toned that down with a bit of my uh, burned umber. And I'm using a sable brush, which is natural hair, so I can create a bit of feather texture. You can see there at the bottom of the breast area, I've extended that red a little bit with a bit of dry brush. And then I'm using my ultramarine blue and burnt umber to mix a grey or sort of a, a, a very um, desaturated brown and start with some of the tail feathers that are sitting under the wing. And I'm using small brushes. This is a small painting, small size. So I don't want to come in with too big of a brush. I need a little bit of control, especially for birds. With landscapes, it's a different thing. I can use big and bold brushes, but when I paint animals such as birds, I want to have um, a good control. And you can see I'm trying to create the same texture with my synthetic round brush there, but it doesn't quite work. Synthetic brushes spring back to a point immediately. So I gave up on that idea and then I mixed a darker version of my brown and then come back to the head. That uh, red top of the head is pretty much dry because it's a small painting. We're not using a lot of water that dries really quickly. So I can kind of work on different parts of the bird. Start with strong pigment and then come in with more water, either a clean brush or a weaker version of the same color just to soften that out and create some variation in the color that indicates light. I've now switched over to a third brush. I couldn't really make up my mind which was the best brush. This is a uh, goat's hair brush, so another natural hair brush, just so that I can get a bit more feathery texture into my brush stroke. That's something you can't really achieve with synthetic brushes, unfortunately. So that's when I have to resort back to a uh, natural hairbrush. In this one I'm talking about, you can see there how the bristles separate and I can create fur or feather texture quite easily. Time to move on to the wing in similar fashion, creating a bit of a textured brush there. I use a darker color now for that bottom part of the wing. Let's spread a bit of a shadow and I'm just going to hint at feathers here. I don't paint feathers, generally speaking. Just use different uh, shades of my brown-blue mix and leave some white gaps to hint at some white feathers poking through as well and then finish off the top of the tail. 
back to my small synthetic round brush that's got a really good point great for details like the legs and the feet things like that Moving on to the other leg. As you can see, the bird is sitting on a branch. So part of the foot is hidden. Now it's time to move on to the beak. Same colors again, this cool gray that we've mixed and I'll start with the underside of the beak and then clean my brush let's pick up a lighter version of that same color for the top and you can see in the corner of the beak I added a bit of red then I add the branch a much stronger version of the same color again load my calligraphy brush because it's allowing me to create these textures because the bristles, they separate as you could see earlier. And then I'm ready for the eye. I always like to preserve the highlight where possible, the white paper, but sometimes, like this time, I don't manage it and I paint over it. I did manage to leave a tiny bit of white in the eye, but I need to have that highlight a bit bigger, so I'm dropping in uh, a bit of white gouache and I'm mixing some of my brownish grey mix into that white gouache. The eyes of birds have got a ring around them, which is a bit of skin really, and that also helps increasing the contrast of the eyeball. And then for a final touch on the beak, I have to add a little nostril there so the bird can breathe. And now I'm coming back to add a bit more feathery texture on the cheek. I'm also going to add a few splatters around the bird. I always like adding a bit of texture, especially when there's no background just to create a bit more visual interest. Now I decided that my red-breasted robin wasn't quite red-breasted enough, so I'm going to glaze over with a bit more of my cadmium red light over it. Um, but it's transparent enough for the underlying wash to come through once it's dry. So just making sure I'm matching that edge there and then with the clean damp brush just pick up a bit of the color but also soften the edge a bit and that's the bird finished and all that's left to do is to pop on a signature now if you are using my template you don't have to paint a red robin you can use the same shape for a sparrow or any other songbird that you can find a reference for i hope you'll try it out and good luck and thanks for watching